This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by ShireSociety.com Space Colonies. Now there's something I could talk about all day without a script. Blah, 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 blah. Now, last time I did a video sort of like this, scientific in nature, I was criticized, not for being unscientific, but for doing this story while I was walking. So, this time I'm doing something different. I'm walking on a noisy surface. Maybe that'll help. Anyway, I can get as worked up about space colony issues as I do about liberty issues. I think I get worked up in the sense of opposing the types of space colonizations that I think aren't perfect. I guess I do this because there's one space colonization idea that is so superior, I can't imagine why anyone would be even talking about the other options. Now, not all the facts are in yet, and this idea, the superiority of this idea, uh, I guess it could go away if I'm missing something, but I don't think I am. The typical plan that people, and even scientists, seem to put forward always seems to be this idea of colonizing far away places, which are supposedly most Earth-like. The currently inaccessible worlds outside the solar system. And then, of course, my nemesis, Mars. I hate Mars. No matter what you might think you want out of space or what other people should want out of space, there's one thing you must have in order to achieve it, at least on any kind of sustainable basis. That thing is profit. You can only profit from space if you keep your costs low and have something to sell. The sales have to exceed expenses. Mars is scientifically interesting, but it's so far away you can't really bring anything back to the Earth on any kind of profitable basis. But m more subtly, the qualities that make it somewhat Earth-like are the very qualities why you want to stay away from it, if you're a colonist. Space isn't great because of its similarities to Earth. It's great because of its differences. The vacuum, the free energy, the general lack of unpredictable weather, relative lack I should say, and most importantly the weightlessness or low gravity. These are qualities that are almost entirely missing from Mars. You're telling me that when you've escaped this gravity well of Earth, you've escaped its unreliable solar power, its unpredictable weather, you've run away from the atmosphere which so complicates travel. You run away from all that to go to a place that has all those same problems? A place that doesn't compensate for these problems with habitability the way the Earth does? you will have escaped nice prison A to live in crappy prison B. You'd be living at the bottom of a gravity well that is one-third as difficult to escape as the Earth is, even if you have the exact same infrastructure and technology. The atmosphere is thick enough to cause killing storms, but it's almost too thin to fly in, using traditional uh, aeronautic means. The benefits uh, normally associated with a vacuum are not really present on Mars. Frictionless travel, uh, pharmaceutical and research options. Solar power works pretty well on Mars, but not as well as on the moon or uh, in uh, space itself. There's water frozen in some areas, and that is an advantage, but it doesn't come anywhere close to outweighing the downsides. To paraphrase Jerry Doyle from Babylon 5, a Ron Paul supporter, by the way, people don't belong on Mars. At least, not till they've done some other things first. By the way, actually, I'm paraphrasing Jerry Doyle's character, Michael Garibaldi, not Doyle himself. I know Doyle's a big space travel supporter, so I don't know how he personally, as an actor, feels about Mars. These words actually were probably written by Mike Straczynski, who is uh, also a Ron, uh, Ron Paul supporter. Anyway, if people don't belong on Mars, where do they belong? Well, I'm getting to that. Stay tuned. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.